Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Fountain Hills Theater's Broadway Quarantine Cabaret. This show began five months ago as a virtual series where we entertain and give back to all of our supporters with live virtual shows every weekend. This series has featured Fountain Hills Theater staff and longtime performers, as well as many of the Valley's top entertainers, live from their homes. Once a month, we also featured Broadway performers coming to us live from New York City. Now, we don't want you to miss any of our upcoming shows, so please hit that little red subscribe button on YouTube or follow us on our Facebook page. If you missed any of our earlier episodes, you can check them out on YouTube anytime. Just follow the bit.ly link listed on our posters. We truly want to thank everyone who has watched our show so far, and a big thanks to those of you who have donated during our shows. Hi, I'm Fountain Hills Theater's Executive Director, Michael Wallet, and I'm here to thank you so much for the outpouring of support you've shown us this past week since we announced that we will be closing for an additional three months. That will bring our closure to about eight months' time, and we're certainly worried about our financial stability during that time. So I have set up the 2020 Recovery Fund. We're asking that you please help us stay alive, thrive, and return live to our stages in November. Now, you can support Fountain Hills Theater in many ways. You can buy a 2021 season flex pass, purchase a gift certificate for a future show, become a 2021 season show sponsor, or just by making a tax-deductible donation to our FHT 2020 Recovery Fund. Now, you can make a donation on our website 24-7 at fhtaz.org, or you can contact our box office by phone, email, or by direct mail. This contact information is all available on our website. We hope that you will consider supporting us or becoming a sponsor during this crucial shutdown. But don't worry, we've got a lot of fun in store for you. Hey there, welcome to the Broadway Quarantine Cabaret. I'm Michael Wallet. I'm back after a little hiatus from the show. We're so excited to be back on with all of you here live on Facebook and YouTube. And we thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a really fun show in store for you. We uh, are excited to kick off uh, this new uh, fundraising campaign we're starting called the Recovery Fund uh, to help us uh, keep alive during this time. And we really appreciate everyone out there who has already reached out to us about being part of that. And uh, we hope that you will consider supporting Fountain Hills during this shutdown as we are shut down still here for a couple more months. So um, some of you may remember when we uh, first kind of went into this pandemic mode back in March, we quickly kind of tried to reinvent ourselves with this uh, show you're watching right now, the Broadway Quarantine Cabaret, which we did for many weeks. We had uh, 18 episodes under our belt. This is episode 19 tonight. Uh, we really appreciate everyone that's watched and support us. We've, we've got nearly 20,000 views on those shows. So really excited for all the support. We're glad you're enjoying the entertainment we're bringing to you while we're shut down. Um, and then right after that, you might remember that we uh, went into a, a, a new inventive way of doing theater called the Broadway Drive-In Theater. Uh, we all got together as a staff and uh, came up with this great idea. We did it in a parking lot stage right outside the doors of the theater. Here's some 
pictures you might remember if you were there. Um, and we had a beautiful stage that was uh, sponsored by Kern Entertainment. Uh, and they are on board with us one more time as we have decided we're going to bring back the Broadway Drive-In Theater to you again here this fall. So this time we're bringing to you the wonderful show Broadway Jukebox, which is the world's first and only interactive Broadway musical. As you may remember, this was set to open back in July and we postponed it due to extending uh, circumstances with the pandemic. So we are gonna bring this to the Broadway Drive-In Theater stage. We're gonna do Friday and Saturday nights, opening on September the 18th, and it will be every weekend for probably about four weeks or so. So we hope that you will consider getting a ticket. They will go on sale next week on August the 10th. And here to talk to us about that exciting night is Fountain Hills Theater's artistic director and the producer of Broadway Jukebox. Please welcome, if you will, our good friend, Peter J. Hill. Hey, I'm Peter. Back. <laughs> Just seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Oh, doesn't it? Oh, wait a yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a little while. We had a little hiatus, but we are back online and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we can bring some entertainment to the locked up troops and feature some of our Fountain Hills regulars. So, and I'm glad you could join us. What? Uh, tell us ab about bringing the, the drive in theater back. Where did this idea come from? Sure. Well, you know, we were going to try to try to open uh, Broadway Jukebox. And then, of course, the governor extended the, the stay at home orders and all those sorts of things. So, we had to back away. And we all thought, well, now what can we do? What can we do? Uh, because we still want to make sure that we're out there performing. Or we want to make sure that the audiences are there to enjoy the shows. And uh, Broadway Jukebox, we, we thought and thought and said, well, let's see if we can. Thank goodness we could talk to uh, Kern Entertainment, Kern Realty. And Phyllis came through with it for us with the, uh, with the stage. And we're able to set it up. And we'll be presenting. Broadway Jukebox, uh, opening September 18th. Uh, it's the first, world's first and only uh, Broadway interactive musical. The audience each night selects the numbers that they'll see. And then backstage, the, the actors frantically assemble a <laughs> brand new show, put out on a whiteboard seconds before they walk out on stage. Uh, the real show is what's going on backstage. Michael, you know this. <laughs> Having done Mickey's jukebox and you're preparing to do Broadway <laughs> jukebox, you know what it's like backstage as we try to throw that thing together, arranging, rearranging the show, and then rushing it right on stage for a brand new, never before seen musical review. Yeah. Now, this, you've done jukeboxes over the years, right? It's kind of a formula yeah. show that you've come up with. What other themes have you done in the past? Well, it's Broadway like jukebox is the very first one I ever did. Uh, I thought that I can, it came as an idea. I said, well, I wonder if this will work. And it proved to be incredibly popular. Uh, won lots of awards and things like that. And then Christmas time rolled around. And we said, you know, maybe this would work for Christmas. And so we created Christmas Jukebox. Since then, we've had, uh, well, we had Broadway Jukebox, Christmas Jukebox. We have had a Country Jukebox, um, a Hollywood Jukebox. And the Nifty Fifties jukebox. So, oh. <laughs> wow! Well, it's a, it's such a fun idea. I, yeah, as you said, I did have the pleasure of doing Mickey's jukebox last year, which was Disney songs. Uh, I didn't I didn't really know many Disney songs, so it was a challenge. That's for sure. We had I think like a hundred or something songs, right, Peter? About hundred and ten songs on the jukebox. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 set kind of looks like a big jukebox, and the audience picks the songs they want, whatever gets the most votes. We we sang. Uh, yep. Sometimes we'll we remember. Find wait. We'll be finding a way for people to still be uh, be able to make their choices, and we'll send the actors around with the little tubs that they can drop their choices in. We'll we'll be social distancing as much as humanly possible. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and then of course the audience with the drive-in theater, they they sit out there in their cars, they they listen on their FM radio. Uh, we'll this time we're also going to uh, have live outdoor sound so that people who want to arrive and decide they would prefer to sit out there in the parking lot rather than in their cars, there'll be space for that. And of course, they'll all be six to eight to 10 feet apart so that the various groups will not be intermingling uh, so that, uh, but they'll be able to come and sit right out there in the parking lot if they prefer to uh, take advantage of not using their car. 
Wow. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we had a really fun time back in May when we did it. It was starting to get hot. Uh, yeah. and, and I suppose it'll be a little warm in September as well. Yeah. But if you're in the audience, you get to stay in your car and not be cool if it's too hot. But most yeah. nights, it, it seemed like it cooled down enough that a lot of people sat outside. It was it was not bad at all. A lot of people sat outside. Uh, and September should be pretty close to what May was. It will still be warm during the days. But the evenings will start cooling down quickly like they do once we get past August. Yeah. Well, that will be fun. We got a great cast put together. Who all is in the cast, Peter? Oh, you're going to ask me that. Well, you, right. yourself, Victoria Faircloud, Lacey right. Dixon, Alex Gonzalez, uh, Jay Melberg, Noel Eric, and now me. Oh. Have, from, from when we first uh, per, were getting ready to present the show, uh, Kyle Webb, who was going to be part of the cast, okay. is not available. He's commitments other places. So uh, having done Broadway jukebox uh, in the past, uh, the logical person became, well, who's <laughs> going to step in? <laughs> what do you fear? <laughs> well, it will be a fun. You will be in for a, great, a treat. Uh, definitely, everybody. You should definitely consider getting tickets. They're going to be on sale next week on our website, fhtaz.org. And um, is there anything else people need to know? I don't know. It's 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 a lot of fun. You should definitely consider coming. We had a great time the last time we did it. I think we did like six, maybe six shows last time. We sold out all of them. We right, were, right. It was packed in there. People really came out. It's a, it's a fun idea. And you're outside and in your own little space. If you're nervous about being around other people and you can wear a mask if you want to get out. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways to enjoy the night. So I think this is something really to look forward to. It will, it will be fun. And, of course, the show itself, Broadway Jukebox, because it's such a fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants kind of show, those people, you know, they say you go to see to, to, to a race, uh, to an automobile race, not to watch them make a lot of left turns, but to see the wrecks. But, well, this is the show. Yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> the reason you go to theaters is just not the same yeah. every time. Things can go wrong. And uh, if they're going to go wrong, <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah, it well, definitely keeps the actors on. Covers great. So. Well, I'm so glad you were here to talk about it. Everyone, definitely look out for this show and remember to get out there and get your tickets uh, next week. Uh, they do go on sale August the 10th. And we thank our sponsors, Current Entertainment, for coming back on board with us and sponsoring us again this time with this beautiful stage. Uh, it's a, like a trailer. They just pull up there and we open it up and the lights and everything's built into it really beautiful setup so it'll be friday and saturday nights uh you come early at seven o'clock so you can put your votes in for the songs you want to hear and the show will go up at 7 30 and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun so thanks for being here peter it's great to see uh, you. Thank you michael we'll see you soon i'm sure on the quarantine get rid of me bring on the entertainment <laughs> we will thanks so much have a good night <laughs> oh it's going to be fun everybody Make sure you get a ticket. Everybody that came last time just loved it. And people have uh, kept suggesting that we bring it back. And it's so hot, of course. Uh, it's cool in your car. But for the actors, it's really warm at this time of year. So it should start to cool down in September. And we're really excited. This cast is awesome. And we're singing all your favorite Broadway show tunes. And you get to pick the songs we sing. I mean, what more could you ask for? So um, up next, we're going to talk about another you know, we're talking about everything being shut down at the theater, which it is, and our season is kind of temporarily on hold. Um, but, you know, we're doing what we can to keep things moving. So we do have the jukebox uh, show coming up at the drive-in. And we have had camps that have been going on uh, in small groups over the summer. It's been a very successful program. We've been using a lot of, uh, of the recommended CDC guidelines for safety, and everyone has really enjoyed it. So we have a new idea that we want to talk to you about, and that is called Creative Connection.
So here to talk to you kind of a, about what's coming up with our Creative Connections program and what else we've got happening on with workshops is our education and outreach manager here at Fountain Hills Theater, Miss Paige Beckman. Hey, Paige. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well. How's it going in quarantine? It's going well. I've been in the theater every day. Yes. Camp just officially yep. ended yesterday, right? Yep. Yep, we had 10 weeks of it. It went great. We had very small groups. Like you said, we followed all the CDC guidelines. We met the kids at the front door with the thermometer, took their temperature right as they came in the building. Then we sent them all right away to wash their hands and hand sanitize. Um, but it went really well. We had groups of approximately 12 kids in each of the classes, sometimes maybe a little more, a little bit less. And it went great. All the kids um, enjoyed themselves this summer. For the parents, it was great to get the kids out of the house because everybody had been stuck at home for so long, including doing right. their work, right? Yeah. So the parents were thrilled to have someplace for their kids to go, and the kids were so excited to get out and be creative. And um, we were just happy to give them a place where they were not on their phones and they weren't on the computer, you know? Right. And it was fun for me to see kids up being kids, dancing, singing, and acting, and sure. playing with each other and having a lot of fun, despite yeah. everything that was going on. And, you know, we had, it, like, it was a pretty intense time when we started our camps in June. There were fires burning out here in Fountain Hills. There right. were, you know, there were riots. There was all kinds of stuff going on. But it was like we had this little safe place we were able to go every day. And um, the kids and I and my assistant, Devin, we just really enjoyed ourselves there and enjoyed each other um, despite everything going on. So it turned out to be a really, really positive experience. And a lot of those families just kept signing up for camp after camp after camp. So Wow. We were, we were thankful to have them. It was just great for all of us. Yeah, for sure. We were just happy to have the doors open and be able to be in touch with everybody that's out there. And I know the kids were really feeling the pressure of being locked up in their house. I'm sure the parents <laughs> were feeling yeah. it too. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. tell me about this new idea you have for this Creative Connections uh, class that's going to start in a couple of weeks here. Well, so back to parents happy that their kids are out of the house. Part of the creative connections is just myself. I have three kids. Um, I've got one in college, one in high school, and one that's just starting middle school. So watching them during the quarantine, trying to do their schoolwork online and watching them be isolated and not have people to interact with and everything was just on a video, if it was happening at all with school, that was just really hard. So I've always secretly hoped something would happen for me to take my own to some place where we could have a very small group of people, be safe, not have too many people, and still be able to get schoolwork done. So in talking with some of the other parents at the theater who had kids with us this summer, they were looking for something similar. Mm. So we kind of talked all throughout the summer about what would be a way that we could do this that would be safe. Um, right. would continue to be in a small group situation and would allow the kids to be able to, you know, do their school work virtually while still having a small groups of people to interact with. So that's where we came up with this. Um, I started to see there are some other theaters around town in Phoenix that were doing this too. And we were talking about it. So it's like everybody had the idea at the same time and we got it all out and running. So um, we're pretty excited about it. We've got different areas in the theater set up for the kids to come and log on their own computers. They bring their laptop and they bring their headset or whatever. They log on. All the teachers obviously have shown the kids what they're going to do for class. And um, then they will come do it with us on at 8 a.m. on the 17th. Our program starts and they'll log in that morning. And my assistant, Devin, and I will supervise. We'll kind of be around making sure kids are able to get on the Wi-Fi and our you know, doing what they need to do. We will be taking phones away and tablets away, only what they're doing with school. And I just think it's a great opportunity for the kids to get out of the house, not be sleeping in all morning, get dressed, have somewhere to go, and then they can interact with their friends at breaks and lunchtime. And then the afternoon, once they all finish up their schoolwork, then we're going to do um, performing arts related activities. We'll act, sing, dance, we'll do improvisation games. I anticipate the first week we won't have as much time because they'll be trying to figure out school and that comes first. Right. But once they get the hang of it, we're going to pull them into all kinds of activities. So I figure parents get, they get everything in one. They'll get all their <laughs> schoolwork done by the time they get picked up. They'll have their arts education. They can go home, um, enjoy their families for the night, not be stressed out about school, and then hopefully sleep well. And then right. come back to it the next day. 
That's wonderful. I think it's a great idea. And, and I'm glad people are signing up and, th and think yeah. it's a good idea as well. Uh, I heard you brought a couple of uh, parents along with you tonight to give, give us a little background on what their children's experiences have been at camp. And are they, are they signed up for the new camp as well? They have both. We're going to have um, two of my students, Sinclair and Paige Underwood, are here with their, their mothers. And yeah, they have been, I think they've both been in every single camp this summer, which was super wow. exciting. That's fun. And then um, they're both signed up for Creative Connections and two of their classmates that were with us all summer are also in Creative Connections. So we had such a great group. We just love to continue it and have all of them come. So we'll see who's available. That's so fun. Let's see, I've, I, got, I see a Sh uh, Shannon and Paige are here. Hey, how are you? Hi, we're great. So tell us a little about your experience at camp this summer and what you're looking forward to about this new uh, Creative Connections camp. We loved camp. It truly saved us, I think, at a time, a difficult time for not just the kids, but our family with all the uncertainty and the isolation. It gave really a chance for kids to be kids and to have fun and to learn something new. And I am so grateful. This was really a safe summer because of Paige and Fountain Hills Theater, for sure. Well, it was, uh, it was safe for me too, because it was fun to be with the kids all day. Made my summer. <laughs> Absolutely. And they learned so much. And I feel like I talked to some of my friends that didn't do camps, didn't have their kids in anything. And the isolation was, I think, what's the hardest. I think as a parent, even going back into the school year, we understand that there are things we can do to catch our kids up, um, you know, education wise. But socially, I found that there are some kids that are developing patterns that might last for life. That's really scary where they're feeling scared to reach out to friends or scared to be around other people. And Fountain Hills Theater made us always feel safe. Um, taken care of. I, I really feel like it was just a loving environment where they could learn something new and really enjoy themselves. Right, Paige? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we all got very close this summer. We were talking about it a lot on Friday. Just It was just really a treat for us all to come together like that all summer long and be close and have fun. And just every day was very, very sweet, I thought. We did too. And Paige would come home and she, I mean, she had more interesting things to tell me about her day than I had about my own day. <laughs> She's right. like, what has happened? And we learned this and so-and-so said this. And I said, oh my gosh, I, I don't have anything interesting to share with you. So around the dinner table, we would actually really go to her and have her tell us about what was going on, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I love it. Well, I just love it when kids are not on their computer all day long. I mean, my own kid too. I'm always having to like take away the phone or turn off the computer. So yes. I love seeing kids be creative and dancing and singing and running around and laughing. And it, it brings joy to my heart too. Oh, absolutely. And I think that the really small groups helped too from an arts perspective because I've never seen Paige enjoy singing or dancing or acting at the same level as I did at the end of the summer. So I'm really impressed by you, Miss Paige, and by Devin. You guys just take, you took your jobs really seriously and we really appreciated that. So good work. And we, we look forward to the school year. This is gonna be like the best start of the school year ever where um, not every not every kid is excited, but we're so excited because of what you guys are offering to us. So, I'm so glad I am too. <laughs> and bring a book. I forgot to tell you, Paige. Yeah. Bring a book. Okay. <laughs> she will. Fun. We're excited. And I think we have Michael. I think we have Sinclair and her mom Amy here too. Hi. Hi, guys. Hello. So Sinclair was with us. Sinclair, we decided you were at every camp this summer, right? It was pretty much every camp except for, I think, one, and it was the TikTok camp. The TikTok, that's right. Yes. And you're signed up, too. Actually, for people watching, Sinclair actually started school this week on Wednesday, this previous Wednesday. So she came in and attended what was our final acting camp of the summer. 
And then on, um, you know, Monday and Tuesday, she did acting scenes with us. And then on Wednesday, she started up school. So we had her in the dressing room. She was all set up. We had a black curtain behind her. So her classmates on Zoom couldn't see what was going on in the dressing room. And she had her headphones on and would do her schoolwork. And when she had a break, she'd come out and interact with all of us and then jump back in. And how did it go for you so far, Sinclair? I think it went really, really well because school was going to be hard to get into anyways because you know it's all virtual and people are going to have wi-fi issues and just all that crazy stuff but it went really really like smoothly and i was i was actually really surprised on how well everything went with my classes and such good well i can tell you she was so excited to actually be with children live in person and she's just so enjoyed you know camps all summer long um, we, we were so grateful that, you know, that was an option for um, Sinclair and all the kids that were there. So it's really nice with all these kids for interaction because everybody's learning from everybody all the time. And it's really great to see people. Um, we talked about it, how we could see everyone grow from maybe the first camp that you did. And you can just see everybody's growth from their singing, their dancing and their acting. And just being able to be kind of silly or crazy with everybody else. It's like a great release and just seeing everybody. And you, I've seen so many people make new friends during these camps. So it's really great just to have human interaction again instead of being locked up. I agree. You know, something else that I really like in this camp is that um, we have people of varying ages. So like Sinclair's one of the older girls. I think we had kids aged five to 14. And what I loved is it's like we had, we were like a little old fashioned little schoolhouse because we had this range of ages and the older kids kind of helped take care of the little kids and everybody, it's like everybody's friends with everybody. And I thought that was one of the really, really sweet things um, that came from this summer as well. A lot of times the older kids will hang out with the older kids and the younger ones hang out with the younger, but I thought everybody mixed with each other. And I thought it was just kind of a real healthy thing. Like everybody had a bunch of brothers and sisters and um, everybody got along great and the little ones really looked up to the big kids. It was just really fun. And another part of why I wanted to do school with everybody, I thought everybody um, brought a lot to the table in that. And even I pictured the same thing happening with school since we had such a good group of kids that so many are continuing. That, you know, I picture it like a little one's having problems with something. One of the big ones is out on a break. They help them out. It's just It was just like a family. It was just like a team. I loved it. And all the kids that have come this year to camps have been so sweet and nice and helpful. So it's so great. I mean, we'll be playing like a team activity and everybody's just incredibly cooperative. All these kids are so welcoming to any new person. It's just, it's crazy how awesome everybody is at these camps. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, so we're looking forward to, we take this week off, Michael. We take this week off. Um, we're giving some of the Fountain Hill schools and the Scottsdale schools an opportunity to kind of get up and running this week. Kids will get their, you know, they'll get their online program all set up. And then we'll start up again the 17th, which is not this Monday, but the following one at 8 a.m. And we'll get everybody going and see where it goes. My, my ultimate goal would be that we'd be able to continue doing this if it worked and if we were forced to uh, keep going like this, that we'd be able to continue meeting and doing school with each other and then ultimately have enough time in the afternoons that we could actually do a show or, you know, put together a medley, a musical medley or something where we could actually perform that. Um, I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, that would be so fun. Oh, yeah. It'd be awesome. And uh, you're, you also just added a class for some younger kids, right, in the afternoon? Yep. Is that right? Yep. So speaking of the younger kids that were involved, um, they we're having the class size for Creative Connections be eight to eighteen year olds. Just we think anybody under the age of eight might be a little too young to independently run their schoolwork on their own. So we want the kids that are able to manage themselves with just a little bit of assistance from us. But those other kids were begging. They wanted to be part of the class. So we were like, well, let's add them on in the afternoon. They can work on their schoolwork at home with mom and dad and then come join us for the creative arts part of the afternoon. And they would be with us from 1 to 2 p.m. Or I'm sorry, 1 to 3 p.m. And that's for ages 5 to 7. And again, they'll be singing, dancing, acting and doing improv with us as well. 
Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing everybody there. Thank you ladies for joining us and young ladies as well. I'm glad you've enjoyed the summer camp program. Paige has done a great job. I've only heard great, great things from everybody. So I'm so happy that you all enjoyed your time there and we'll see you on the 17th for more creative connections, right? <laughs> Thank you. All right, Paige. Well, thanks so much for being here. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, it sounds like. So I'm excited to hear all about it. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, and enjoy your uh, week off. Thank you. All right. Sure you made it. <laughs> all right. Take care. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> well, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, yes, make sure that you do look into uh, signing up for our. Creative Connections classes. They are going to start here in uh, about 10 days, I guess it is, uh, on the 17th of August. And you can do your schoolwork and then do some after school fun with the arts and work on some improv games and music and dancing, all kinds of fun stuff. So it's going to be great. So look forward to that. I do want to remind you, if you're watching the show, to please consider giving to our uh, 2020 Recovery Fund. We are working hard here to keep things going while we're closed, but um, it is not going, uh, is, is not an easy job, let's just say that. So we're creating these cabarets, hopefully that you'll tune in uh, to watch and that you will consider uh, giving a donation to the Fountain Hills 2020 Recovery Fund so that we can return this fall. So uh, enough with all the Fountain Hill stuff. Let's get to the entertainment, which I'm sure is what you're all here for. I've got three wonderful powerhouse ladies with me tonight. I'm so lucky to have them with me. Uh, we're going to open up the musical portion of the show with our good friend, Britt Powell, who you might remember from Mamma Mia last year. She was Donna of Donna and the Dynamos and our sold out production of Mamma Mia, which was a great fun. And she has been a frequent guest on the cabaret. We're so grateful to her for her time and talents. And we asked her if she'd come back. I'd said it would be fun if we invited back all the original guests from our very first show, episode one, for our return here on episode 19. So all three of these ladies are back again uh, a few months later, a few months more quarantined, but still singing like birds, and you're going to enjoy seeing them all tonight. So let's bring on our good friend, Britt Powell. There she Hi. is. Hi. I want to go to camp. I know, right? <laughs> Sounds so much more fun than working from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we work from camp? Yeah. That's an option. That, that, that might work. We could do it while they do school. We can do our job. <laughs> Oh, well, if only life was that simple. I know. Life so, is not a cabaret. Yes. Speaking of cabaret, will you sing a song? I need some music. I'll sing a song. Absolutely oh, ask me to sing a song. You bet. What are you going to sing for us? We'll do a little Patsy Klein. Oh, well, we just I, happened to I got to my do accent it. going. My, I got my Missouri thing happening with the twang. So let's just, let's just, everybody knows this song. So I expect everybody to sing along. Awesome. This Let's is interactive. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see if I can remember how all of this works. I'm not playing the piano. But I look like it, don't I? Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling. So lonely I'm crazy Crazy for feeling So blue I knew You'd love me As long as You wanted me for somebody new worry why do I let myself worry wondering what in the world do 
thinking that my love could hold you. I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you. I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you. Uh, how I've missed hearing you sing. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Always good to hear you. Now, those of you out there who may have been paying attention, we will be hearing that very song on our stage later this season in the musical Always Patsy Klein. Oasis was closing. Oh, and now, <laughs> an, an advertisement from YouTube. Sorry, it's also it was a very sad ad too. I tried to skip it. I tried to mute it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to show business here on the virtual Broadway quarantine gathering. <laughs> As I was saying, always Betsy Klein coming to a theater near you. <laughs> we are reopen. We are going to bring that to our stage. It's a really super fun show. If you have not seen it before, um, it's uh, a real true life story about Patsy Klein and one of her fans who they developed a pen pal relationship. She used to write back and forth to her. People and they, write letters? <laughs> this was a very old story. <laughs> the been dead since the seventies. I think I don't know. It was an old. This is an old story, but I'm happy we can bring it to our stage. It was a lot of fun, and it has all the great Patsy Klein songs that you ever want to hear. They're all in one show. So uh, look forward to that next year sometime. Your good friend Jay is out there saying hello. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Hi, Jay. We miss you. Jay's gonna come do the drive-in with us now. Britt, you did the drive-in last time, right? I did. I did. Oh. I think the drive-in was so much fun. Yeah, tell the audience a little bit about what that experience is like. Oh gosh. Okay. So as as an audience member, you are in the comfort of your own car or someone else's car if you come with someone else. Um, so as far as your safety needs, they're all met. If you want to sit outside your car, you can. If you want to stay in your car, you can. But it's super cool because the stage is, it, it's beautiful. It's big. Everybody can see everything. The sound is fabulous. It's broadcast through uh, uh, FM on, into your car. And I heard Peter say there's actually going to be external sound this time. So if you want to sit outside, you'll be able to hear um, even a little more theater experience. But it is so much fun to see all these performers come in and, and sing and just for the for the one we had in May, everything was scheduled. And we had a couple of group numbers, which were really crazy and fun. But it was uh, hearing that the Broadway cabaret is going to be in the dry. Okay, so I saw Mickey's yeah. <laughs> last year. And it is, uh, I, it's a family show. So I can't, I mean, it's, it's, it's controlled chaos. How's that? That's it even it's yeah. a, it's controlled chaos, but everyone nails their songs. The, the performers have no idea what's coming up next um, at, at the beginning of the show. It's like, here's your show run. So it's a wonderful experience. If you want to hear a song, go put your song in and you will have a fabulous professional sing it just for you. So yeah. it's it's the it's it's so much better than karaoke because everybody in the show is fantastic extraordinarily yeah. talented and you'll get to hear all of your Broadway favorites. So make yeah. sure you get tickets because our, our drive-ins all sold out and it was, it was a novel thing. It was new. So this is, you know, the people who've experienced it before, like, yeah, I'm coming back. So make sure you get your tickets for this. It's going to be fun. Yes. It's going to be super fun. And, uh, and it's a, a never the same show <laughs> every night. <laughs> Now you're in it too, Michael, right? I am in it. Yes, I'm. I don't know how I signed up again after Mickey's jukebox, which about killed me last <laughs> year. 
Chicken Soup Box ran for eight weeks, first of all, uh, which is a very long run, especially in the summer here in Phoenix. Um, but it's it's as a performer, it is a major challenge because you've got to know, you know, we have 120 something songs that we have to be able to just pull out. And sometimes nobody picks your song until like week six. <laughs> and then you okay, say, like, well, then what is like your that? favorite song to sing? Because when I show up, I'm making sure I'm putting that in. Hmm. I am singing. I'm trying to think what I'm singing. I'm singing Close Every Door from Joseph and the Music Tech for the Dream Oh, I love that one. one of my favorites. Uh, I'm singing This Is the Moment from Jekyll and Hyde, which was in the last drive in. Nick Hambrook sang it. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I okay, can't so I'm going to need a list of all the songs you sing because those are all the songs I'm putting in for. Okay. I'll try to know the words. I mean, I have you even been singing on this cabaret show, Michael, at all? Yeah, You've I done like 300 of them. I sang one song, I think. <laughs> I have enough to worry about without singing, trying to remember a lyric. I'm trying to run, I'm running a op video operation over here. It's insane. <laughs> You're running a live broadcast from, hey. the, from the truck. <laughs> My sister is watching. Hello, Paula. Hi, Paula. I'm looking forward to another drive-in. So are we. I'm not looking forward to the heat, but I'm looking forward to looking at you in your air conditioning, why I'm hot. <laughs> hey, but at least it won't challenge your vocal cords. Yes, this is true. This is true. Will it? I don't even know. I'm. And oh, thank you, Dorinda. Thank you very much. That's cousin Lynn. She came to see Mama Mia many times. <laughs> I did well, too. Okay. I was there every time, every show. <laughs> she was. Well, will you sing another song for us? Sure. We might as well keep it a few decades. Music. It's all about music. What? Yeah. What else you got for us? Um, I don't know if any of y'all saw Jersey Boys. Yes. There I are no that. female songs in there, but Frankie Valley has the same range I do. So. <laughs> Voice is very high. <laughs> right. I, can, I have a Frankie Valley and Sammy Hagar range. It's pretty, it's very broad. So I'm going to sing a Frankie Valley song for you guys. Of course, awesome. you can't take my eyes off you. Oh, we look forward. So I expect everybody to dance through this because this is a, there's a lot of dance music in it as we'll start. You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you You'd be like heaven to touch I wanna hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true can't take my eyes off of you Harden the way that I stare There's nothing else to compare The sight of you leaves me weak There are no words left to speak But if you feel like I feel Please let me know that it's real you're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Are the horns ready? <laughs> and <laughs> I love you, baby And if it's quite alright Baby, to warm the lonely night, I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby, don't bring me down. I pray, oh, pretty baby. Now that I found you, stay. Let me love you, baby. Let me love you. You're just too good to be true. And take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. I want to hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived. And I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. And if it's 
Right, all right, I need you, baby. Do on the lonely night, I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby, don't bring me down, I pray. Oh, pretty baby, now that I found you, stay. Oh, please, baby, trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty baby. Everybody's dancing. That, well, we were dancing. Everybody backstage is dancing. Good times. Well, I'm so glad you could be here. We've got a couple other awesome singers coming up. So amazing oh singers. Yeah. These women. Holy smokes. Yeah. We are so lucky to have them here. Amazing characterization. Crazy, kind, and fun, too. I mean, these two women, rock stars. Completely. Yep. Well, we will be back in just a second, Brett. I'm so glad you were here tonight to sing with us. Next up, we have the lovely and talented Miss Savannah Alfred coming to us. Hey, there she is. How's it going? Hello, hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Wow. I know. We're so glad you're back. You were on our very first show way back in the day. <laughs> way back when, years and years yeah, ago. I know. Like in 2020, for was 20 years, haven't we? Because that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the quarantine is now a time, amount of time. You remember yeah. the quarantine? Right? You remember those whole, whole 20 years we spent in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> telling you, I am telling you. Well, I'm so glad you're here. I love hearing you sing about more than anything. So what have you got in store for me? Something from Kinky Boots, I think, right? Yes, a little Kinky Boots to start us off. Um, oh, singing the history of wrong guys. So I got to gotta get my English accent on and, you know, have All a little right. fun. <laughs> oh, no. Don't you dare. Girl, 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 I'm warning you. Oh, I think I have a crush. I can't. Oh, I think I'm falling for him. Oh, why not? Women have been making bad choices since the beginning of time. Are you gonna be another one of mine? Oh, I used to think you were from outer space. Who's this bright eyed guy in your place? You're kind of cute when you're not so shy. Oh, but I've been here before. Have I come back for more? Another chapter in the history of wrong guys. You used to be so eh, a limp like luster ball. But now you're changing into something I just can't ignore. Trying honestly. I've been hurt like this before. Hmm. Is there really more to you than what I always thought? How can you surprise me anymore? Oh, oh, oh. He's got a girlfriend, you flake. Why are they always so nice when they're unavailable? No, don't want to be another star-crossed lover. We all know how that ends. We all know I'm better off without him. We're better off as friends. <laughs> but I've been here before. Have I come back for more? Another chapter in the history of wrong guys. Yesterday, no spark, no heart, and act like law. But today, I'm feeling something that I just can't ignore. Charlie! Honestly, I've been hurt like this before. Oh, oh, oh. The history of wrong guys. Chapter one, he's a bum. 
Two, he's not into you. Three, he's a sleaze. Four, loves the girl next door. Five, loves the boy next door. Six, don't love you no more. Makes you insecure. Makes you so unsure. Loves his mother more. Has his Oh, has a girlfriend named Nicola. Eh? Oh, Charlie. Oh, <laughs> I just, I can't be hard like this anymore. Oh, oh, is there anything I can do to be in your arms, Charlie? Oh, <laughs> I got it. I've been executized. <laughs> I love it. That's such a great song for you. Oh, it is. And next time when I sing it, I'm going to sing the right lyrics. That's going to be oh. it's gonna be fun. It's going to be great. I'm so excited. <laughs> the lyrics, nobody will know. You've got you know, that. you know, why not? I was like, what am I going to sing? Something I don't know? Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Love you, you Jay. Got some fans out there. My <laughs> sister, Savannah, she loves you. My sister. <laughs> yes. She does rock, Jay. You were correct. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of fans in the house. You gotta so what, love. What just have you been like... up to there in the uh, quarantine? Now, I know you've started like a thousand new things. I have, I have. I've been busy because I was, I was slowly but surely dying because I was like, I can't. I need to come into the out now. I'm such a social butterfly. I'm like, let me out. Um, yeah. But some of the exciting things that I've been doing, um, I helped start a virtual theater lab, which is a virtual theater group. Right. I am their executive secretary and diversity consultant. I'm so fancy with my titles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just a wonderful group of artists. Um, we have a little over 300 artists with us and we do um, some different reads. We do um, private reads. We also have been um, going ahead and doing some um, some original works that we've been able to broadcast. Um, so it's just, it's an amazing space um, to give people that have not normally had a voice in the arts a voice. And yeah. it's so exciting. Tell um, me and about the event you guys are doing tomorrow. Yes, Voices for Change. Um, it is a Black Lives Matter campaign. Um, so it's a group of about, I want to say about 10, 10 artists, I do believe, um, coming together um, that are in our group. And they're all doing pieces um, to inspire the change that we want to see with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, my husband is singing from Ragtime. Um, he's saying, make them hear you. So that's exciting. And we have so many lovely, we have some poetry um, in it as well. And we have just just a beautiful array of artists coming together to speak against um, all of the craziness that's been going on. And now that it's died down in the media, now is the time to ramp it back up and say, hey, Black Lives Still Matter, just to let you know. Yeah. So they can see it on uh, Virtual Theater Lab's Facebook page, right? They are. We are going to be streaming. It's a live, um, streaming the live video is pre-recorded, but we will be streaming it live on our face page, Virtual Theater Lab. Yes, indeed. It's at 4 Very p.m. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Well, I'm going to tune in for sure. I'm really excited. I, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us and helping me put together the roundtable that we did uh, when all this kind of took place. I don't know. I don't know what you felt come from that, but I felt like it has started a good conversation in town. I feel uh, like it sparked it. It sparked that conversation that needs to be happening and it just kind of trickled and everybody started to kind of jump on. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just so happy that we did it and that the response was so positive. So many people in the theater community reached out to me afterwards and said, we needed to hear this. We didn't know we needed to hear it. And uh, it's really, it's a great conversation. So I, I'm glad that things are moving, still moving forward in town here, especially with these uh, types of um, things you're doing, like the show you're doing tomorrow, which is just keep keeping it in everybody's mind. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I hope that we, I hope we do see a lot of change, you know, and not just talk about change. Yes. But, but I'm hoping that we see that in the future. So um, what else you got going on? Well, we're going to tune down all of the theatrics for just a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm actually doing Your Daddy's Son from Ragtime. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hear that. Here she is again, Miss Savannah Alfred. Mm -hmm. 
Daddy played piano, played it very well. Music from those hands could catch you like a spell. He could make you love him, for the tune was done. You have your daddy's hand. You are your daddy's son. Daddy never knew that you were on your way. He had other ladies and other tunes to play. When he up and left me, I just stopped and ran. Only thing in my head, you were your daddy's son. Couldn't hear no music, couldn't see no light. Mama, she was frightened, crazy from the fright. Tears without no comfort, screams without no sound. Only darkness and pain, the anger and pain, the blood and the pain. I bury my heart in the ground, in the ground. When I bury you in the ground. Daddy played piano, Betty's plain still. Mama can't forget him, don't suppose I will. God wants no excuses, I have only one. You have your daddy's hand, forgive me. You are your daddy's son. Oh, you're making me cry up here on the cabaret. <laughs> Yay! <Okay>. Oh. <laughs> She is one talented lady. You are out there. You need to hire her when you go back. When we go back to work, please, please, please. Give, a job. <laughs> give me a job. Give it all. Give me all the jobs. Whatever jobs. Just give me a job, please, please. I had the pleasure of working with Savannah a couple times. We we did. Oh gosh, what's that show called? Nine to five. Yes. Many years ago. Uh, <laughs> but we recently we did. Uh, the World Goes Round, yes. the Zoni award-winning production at Scottsdale Center with a fantastic cast, including our next our next special guest, Kathleen Berger, was also in that cast, and uh, Victoria Fairclaw and Patrick Russo. It was, oh, it was stunning. It was stunning. Josh Condon, the best musical director. So good. We miss you, Josh, wherever you are. <laughs> we do. We Out miss there. you. He took a real he took a real job, I think. <laughs> Look, I did too. Let's, let's be real. I was like boarding, running from the theater. <laughs> but uh well, Kathleen, are you there somewhere? Kathleen Berger to the stage, please. Kathleen Berger to the stage. No. I don't see her backstage. Here's Britt. Hey Britt. You can entertain us. Hey. <laughs> I was muted. Hi, what's up? Hi. You're <laughs> lost backstage. You find your way. Just like in a real show, sometimes you miss your entrance. I mean, I did yeah. not have an entrance. This was this was not my entrance. 
No, and I was <laughs> but, but you shoved me out. It's okay. Kathleen is backstage in the curtains. Where's yeah. She's fighting for her. She's fighting for her. She'll be here. It's, it's, she's coming soon. I, I understand. I'm sure she's coming soon. <laughs> uh, Britt, have you met Savannah before? Or you, you've met on the cabaret, of course, but you don't know if you've I'm ever. Virtually. Done virtually. Her. We have virtually. a virtual yeah. Brady Bunch world, yes. <laughs> and how did the Brady Bunch have Zoom? Right, because right. that's exactly what that was. Little pop ups. That was definitely Zoom. You're I'm welcome. Coming. You're welcome for that one. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness uh, gracious. Oh, I just got a message from Kathleen's mother saying the baby is melting down. Oh, no. We talk to other girls. All right. Okay. We are. Kathleen, we are one of her children. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, has of twin three year old boys. So, a meltdown is really quite a moment. It at her could be home. any one of them. I understand this. I understand this hardcore. <laughs> what <laughs> twin five year old? So, oh, yep, yep. It's I a fun dogs. time. I rescue senior dogs for their level oh. of activity. So, yeah, <laughs> twin, girl, like they going nowhere. <laughs> I'm so glad you all have them. That's great. It's amazing. I love you for it. It's such a beautiful blessing to be stuck in the house with my toddlers for the past <laughs> 20 years. Yeah, I think what if if anything happens, you know, super super positive after this whole quarantine is teachers salaries need to be like they need to be given all the money I will throw right. them yeah. everything. Take I said take teachers the please. Take it please off. take them. Take them please. <laughs> <laughs> they said you're going to be a teacher and a mama and a disciplinary, and you're going to be stuck in the house, and you're going to lose your whole career. I said, wait, wait. This is too much. Stop it. Make it stop. And here's Whoever's playing Jumanji, they need to stop. They need to wrap yeah, this game up. Is it for someone to say Jumanji? I'm, I'm really hoping we don't have to wait till like January 1st, but I think that's what's going to happen. No Happy New Year's. Everybody's just going to scream Jumanji, and we're going to be out. I saw this it. meme. It's this guy looking, at his, looking down, and he has this real anticipatory Happy look on his face. It says New Year's Eve 2020. 11 59 He's like, and then his face, then the next the next thing it says New Year's Eve 11 59 60. He's like, oh, here's never gonna end. You said it earlier, and it's been 20 years. In it 20 has. Years. It has been. <laughs> well, I will take the quick moment we have here to remind everyone about our 2020 recovery fund, which yes. we are, we have started now. We really, really need you to help us keep the doors uh, open until we can reopen in the fall. We will have been closed for eight months by the time this comes around. And uh, it's, it's a little bit scary for us here in theater land. Uh, we don't want theater to not come back. So. Well, the arts is what's been keeping everybody sane. I know. Right? Can you imagine if it all went away? <laughs> Crazy. Exactly. Because exactly. real life's pretty scary. So we do Thank need. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, not beautiful. Amazing. Ridiculous. So <laughs> fabulous and perfect. Beautiful isn't good enough. Oh. oh. Dabby. They're multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? thank you, thank you. I was like, I'm going to hurt somebody's eardrum. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Somebody at home is like, turn it, Wilma, turn it down. That's what's <laughs> happening. I guarantee it. Who's screaming at a baby? It's me. It's me. <laughs> Kathleen says one more minute. All right, Kathleen. We got you, girl. We got, we got you. you. <laughs> we got you. I don't know. The, the three, between the three of us, we can't find anything to say for another I mean, of course yeah. not. <laughs> Before this started, Savannah, I don't know if you're privy to this, but Michael's like, we need to keep it within an hour, which the only thing he didn't say was so Brit. <laughs> <laughs> keep it down, lady. Uh, me too. Me too. Yeah, he track? always keeps me on the reins. He keeps me on the reins. He's like, would you call this leopard or cougar? Ooh. I think definitely cougar. <laughs> definitely cougar. Anyone that knows that. you know cougar is definitely. <laughs> I made the mistake one time because I love animal print and I had on a leopard print dress and I took a picture, put it on the gram with, and I said, it's, it's leopard darling, not cougar was my really clever hashtag, but I used hashtag leopard hashtag cougar 
Uh oh. For the first no. time in my Instagram life, my DMs lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in July. They said hello. Like who's searching hashtag cougar? Oh, all the guys in my DMs. That's who. Yeah. <laughs> every every guy under thirty was needs a little cash. Probably they were excited. <laughs> they were excited. They were like sugar mama opportunity delivered to me on the gram. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, we, have, we have a Rosie making an appearance. No, Aww. she like. <laughs> She I didn't budge it. when you were singing. She loved your voice, Savannah. Oh, so I know dumb. the second song, so that's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> I love a lullaby. And it's really funny that Kathleen, not funny that she has to deal with men melting down children attitudes, but yeah. the two songs she's singing <laughs> are very diva-ish songs. And it's, she's like, mm, hold my place. <laughs> like, hold please. We got you, boo. See, we Kathleen, got are you ready to come on? She's back, yes. <laughs> the queen. Hi. The queen. We had a little, a little guy who was just about asleep, and he just needed mommy. Aww. And he's out like a light. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. five minutes, and he was done. Total boss, babe. Yeah. I'm so surprised none of mine have come because I was, <laughs> I was guaranteed that at least one of the out of the three yeah. was going to come storming <laughs> in here. <laughs> And it's, I guarantee it. Also it. Bad he was so sweet. He was just like, I want mommy. Aww. Yeah. Well, no, she's tired. Right. Come on, she's queen. Like, mommy's tired. Uh, mommy's back in showbiz mode. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. What are you going to sing for us? Whatever you well, want. I thought I would just do a little bad Madeline Kahn imitation for you. and be <laughs> Perfect. Um, we love it. <laughs> Here I stand, the goddess of desire. Set men on fire. I have this power. Morning, noon, and night. It's quick romancing. Some drinks and dancing and then a shower. Stage door Johnny's always around me. They always hound me with one request. Who can satisfy their lustful habits? I'm not a rabbit. I need some rest. I'm tired. I sick and tired of love. I've had my fill of love from below and above. Tired, tired of being admired. Tired of love uninspired. Let's face it, I'm tired. I've been with thousands of men again and again. They promise the moon. They're always going and coming and coming and going and always too soon. Right, ladies? I'm tired. Tired of playing the game. Painted a cry and shame. I'm so tired. God damn it, I'm exhausted. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, excuse me? What's your name? My name's Tex, ma'am. Tex, ma'am. So tell me, Tex, ma'am. Are you in show business? No. Then why don't you get your friggin' face off my screen? I, 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 Hey, Peter, got a big donation in your pocket or are you just enjoying the show? Good. Ah, 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 
đi thôi đi thôi thôi đi thôi I'm tired, tired of playing the game. They did a cry and shame. I'm so tired. <sighs> I'm tired. Give me a break. I'm not a snake. Can't you see I'm sick? <laughs> I'm pushed. Let me alone. Get off the phone. Don't you know I'm pooped? I've been with thousands of men again and again. They sing the same tune. They start with Byron and Shelley, then jump on your belly and bust your balloon. I'm tired, tired of playing the game. Ain't it a friggin' shame? I'm so, let's face it. Everything below the waist is kaput. Tired. <laughs> oh. It goes on and on. <laughs> and the orchestra continues to play us out. I love it. <laughs> all right, welcome back, ladies. You're all back. Welcome on screen. You're all on screen. Welcome back. Welcome yeah. back. We got oh, a full God. house here. Well, it's been a fun show. I'm so glad you all could join me. You were all my first guests on this show. Yeah, I thought you were going to say favorites. Gosh, it's so well, close. You're my favorite. You're first. Back. Clearly, your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like the, regulars, the regulars are back. Kathleen's been on like a million times. Britt's been on. <laughs> Savannah, I don't know how many times I drug you on. I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the people entertained, and I know you ladies can always pull it off. I love it. It's so much fun. It's so nice to be wanted. Out. I get to hear Britt, and I get to hear Savannah, and it makes my life happy. I, I love you, Queen. <laughs> Wow. I missed you. <laughs> we were talking about the world goes round just a little bit ago, Kathleen. How much oh, fun we had! Wasn't that amazing? That was amazing. It was so good. Oh All my gosh! Great performers and Josh Condon. We were talking about how much we love Josh yeah. Condon. You know that show actually would not suck as a drive-in theater show. It wouldn't. Hmm. <clears throat> it wouldn't at all. You got a whole cast. Peter J. Hill, if you're listening. Kathleen's just saying a proposal. I love it. Oh, Megan, our friend Megan's out there. Hello, Megan. Hi, Megan. Hello. I miss you. My babies miss you, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> she came to babysit them once, and I swear I thought they were going to follow her home. Oh, yeah. so. nice. I feel like my kids will follow anybody home to get away from me at this point in time. <laughs> it's great. They're like, get this crazy woman away from me. <laughs> I love my little dudes so much, and I went to the store to get away from them yesterday. Oh, girl, I was at the 99 cent store for an hour and a half. I got five things, but I was there for an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go look at the porch furniture. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's the only Target and 99 cent store. That's about the, my only saving. And Costco. This is my saving grace. Oh, oh, thank you. The Fry's Marketplace has a bar. <gasps> what? You did not know this? No. Where is, this, where is this fries at? Let me get. Right, please. Can I get the address? I need to go to that fries. All, all the all the fries marketplaces. Oh, I don't. I must not have one near me. I've seen them, but I've not been. There's one like on Shay and something. Tatum and Shay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fine. I will drive from Tempe to Tatum and Shay so I can go yeah. to the bar. There's one. There's one in Tempe somewhere, somewhere. or Mesa. I've seen one, but I didn't know what it was. Okay, I'm going to find well, it. Really, they have a bar. grocery store with a bar in it. That's my mission, to find the fries with the bar. Got it. <laughs> Michael, I heard you talking to Savannah about Virtual Theater Lab. Um, so I've actually gotten to do two super awesome play readings with them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
And you're so I'm amazing. Stella in the cake and my dream role ever in the history of ever, which is Martha and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Oh, stunning. Wow. Both roles oh. killed it. Wow. What are the, the readings are just uh, like a closed group and you all get to- The private readings, no, no rehearsal or for the cake, I think we had just one brief rehearsal meeting. Right. Beforehand. Yeah, we are transitioning right now. It was just kind of just giving artists um, some relief and just saying that we're here for you. We're going to give you some time to just, you know, read a show with your friends and be great. Right. Um, but we are transitioning to starting to do more live performances. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, different uh, original playwrights where we can contact them and say, hey, let's put your work on, let's do it. Um, so I'm super excited about it. We're gonna be, um, for next month, um, <clears throat> the month of September is um, Latinx History Month, I do believe. <laughs> I, I th that was my Oscar music. She said, you've been talking too much, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. I, I hit the wrong button. I, mean, I, have no idea what I, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. But yeah, Latin, next month is Latinx, um, Latinx uh, History Month. So we're going to be doing a lot of plays that are surrounding Latinx um, and finding some Latinx playwrights and trying to bring those to everybody. So it's exciting. We're doing some exciting stuff. That is mm -hmm. awesome. Really neat. And it's, it's such a, um, you know, it, it's just such a relief for us because we can't even do what we would normally do, which is if there were no theater opportunities, we'd all get together in somebody's house and do a musical reading or a play reading. And we can't do that because it's dangerous. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, and, and this is a good way, I guess, to just sort of hold the fort and hope that, that we can start to come back from this. And, and absolutely hope that theaters can financially come back from this. Yeah, and it's hard. Everyone's it's hard. hurting right now, but if you're out there, donate to Fountain Hills Theater. Because Please. And we need donate. It. I don't know where you are on my screen, but yeah. donate right there. Look at there. All that beautiful information for you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and we need them to do the world goes round for Savannah. And <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not a narcissist. Why do you ask? It's not, it's not like I got something to do. So I mean <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, I'm gonna wrap this fun up, but I want to remind everybody Voices for Change, Black Lives Matter campaign is tomorrow, four o'clock. Virtual Theater Lab's Facebook page. You can tune in and see uh, Savannah and her husband are part of that. As um, That's going to be a really neat show, so please tune in and see that on their page. Kathleen and Britt and I will be at home with nothing coming up. So think of us. <laughs> think of us fondly. Someday we'll have something to plug on this show, don't you? Think? Yes. I yeah. do have. Yeah. I would like to plug the Broadway Drive-In Theater. Broadway Jukebox, which is coming up uh, very soon, uh, about a month or so from now, we were going to be opening that on our Broadway drive-in stage. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. September the 18th, it opens every weekend, Friday and Saturday nights. So come get your tickets for that. They go on sale next week on August the 10th. And of course, we have our wonderful Creative Connection starting up for Schooling from Home. Um, with some arts arts and entertainment classes in the afternoon, singing, dancing, and games, and fun stuff. So consider that all that information, of course, is on our website. So Kathleen, will you take us out with something before we close out the show? But of course. But <laughs> I couldn't <gasps> possibly. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, no, I don't have anything prepared, Maestro, please. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to my part? It was exciting at the start. Now we're halfway through Act Two, and I've had nothing yet to do. I've been off stage for far too long. It's ages since I had a song. This is one unhappy diva. The producers have deceived her. There is nothing I can sing from my heart. Whatever happened to my part? I am sick of my career. Always stuck in second gear. Up to here, with frustration and with fear. I've no Grammy. 
no rewards. I've no Sony awards. I'm constantly replaced by Deborah Qualtier. Deborah Qualtier. Oh, for God's sake! Whatever happened to my show? I was a hit. No, I don't know. I'm with a bunch of British knights prancing round in woolly tight. I might as well go to the pub. They have been searching for a shrub, out hunting for a bush, while they can kiss my tush. It seems to me they've really lost the plot. Whatever happened to my... I'll call my agent, damn it! Whatever happened to my... Not yours. Not yours. But my <laughs> Oh my lord. That's what happens when mommy doesn't get the leads. Queen. Queen. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys all so much for being here. You all sound fantastic as always. And I'm sure I'll be asking you back before you know it. Mm -hmm. The answer is always yes. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Early people donate. FHDAZ.org. Yes, please. If you're out there, please, please, please send us. You can go to our website, fhtaz.org. Thank you so much, ladies, for being with us. I want to remind you, we will be back every Saturday. And next Saturday, we're back August 15th. We have the Fountain Hills Youth Theater Cast Union of Into the Woods. We're going to have a lot of the cast members from that show back to join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. So please, if you will, remember to tune in next week. I see your final comments, Kathy, Megan, Jay. Everyone loves you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see you.